So I'm delighted to be with Lynn, who is the founder and CEO of Funny Women, which is um, something I'm really pleased to be on the advisory board, and I've been advising them, um, and I know we'll talk a bit about um, some of the connections um, Funny Women has with corporate, which really resonated with me. But yeah, Lynn, lovely to you know, speak with you. Please tell us a bit more about Funny Women. Oh, thanks, Ali. It's great to be here and good to talk to you about this. And of course, delighted because we've been we've been working together now for just over a year, perhaps a bit longer, actually. Mm. Uh, and um, yeah, so Funny Women came about as a sort of happy accident, like a lot of things in my life. Mm. And uh, I was working, I had a whole former career in PR and marketing, mm. and I had a client in the world of comedy, it's a comedy mm. promoter. And I was told uh, when I asked why they didn't book any women mm. that they didn't book any women because women weren't funny and there were no funny women. And I had a major light bulb moment mm. Uh, mm. about the whole, because I, I, this was in yeah. about 1998, so I knew there were women, but they were very invisible on the circuit. So I came up with the idea of uh, running a show mm. specifically for female comedians and that adopted the name of Funny Women mm. and uh, did a smart thing actually, which is a, a good business, quite a good business moment in my life where I just thought, oh, how will I protect the name? And bear in mind, this was the late 90s. I did mm -hmm. a really smart move. I registered the URL <laughs> for the oh. website. Mm -hmm. And of course, I owned it all that time yeah. and, and variants thereof. But that was mm. really interesting because obviously nobody had websites in 1998. <laughs> uh, so I came up with the idea. I then lost the client because mm. the original guy who hired me left the business. And mm. the guy I was left with, with was the misogynist who didn't think women were funny. Mm. So mm. I then had to make a decision having sort mm. of packaged up the name. I thought, you know, this is the one I'm not going to walk away from. You know, I spent my life promoting other people, mm. writing about, I trained as a journalist, and writing about other people and making everyone look great. Mm. This is saying I want to do for me and I want to run, I want to run this business. Mm. Mm. So Funny Women was set up officially in 2002, so we're 18 this year. Yeah. Um, and we're, yeah, that it still focuses very much around the same sort of things, but the, we're best known for, in the world of comedy, we're best yes. known for the Funny Women Awards, which is yeah. where we are at the moment, just mm -hmm, coming up mm -hmm. to the final of the 2020 Funny Women Awards. And I think everyone would be really interested to know, Lynn, um, about how you've had to pivot during oh, this yes. crisis. We have pivoted very precariously, I think. Pirouetted, I used it, I think, as an expression. Mm. I know a few people picked up on that, but I started it. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, we um, so we've always run the awards pretty much analog, live comedy on stages. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to give you some perspective, when we started them in two thousand three, mm. we scraped together seventy entrants for one award. Mm -hmm. And in two thousand nineteen, which mm. is my probably a good reference point, we had over 1,500 women involved, engaged, nominated, wow. taking part, either by, they, we have a stage award, we have a mm. comedy writing mm. award, we have a comedy short film award. Mm. Uh, last year we had a best show award, clearly this year not a good thing, so we've replaced it with best web series this year, mm -hmm. and we've now um, introduced a new industry award. Uh, but, at, so, at our peak, we were getting mm -hmm. like 450 entries for the stage award, which is the live award. Yes, yes. So we had already started to put some of our stuff online mm -hmm. because to mm -hmm. see the logistics of seeing 450 acts live, mm -hmm. which we did in 2018, that nearly killed me. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to do, particularly when you haven't got a lot of funding and you're trying to do things on a budget. So we decided that last year we would. Uh, have videos submission entry mm. for the comedy for the stage award, which worked brilliantly actually. And then we just chose the top acts to see mm -hmm. live. Mm. But of course, this year we yeah. didn't do that. So we have run, and of course we did have our moment of whether we should run it at all. Mm. Um, but because we'd already pivoted a lot of stuff to that online process, mm -hmm. we thought, well, okay, 
we can, we can still have entries online because mm -hmm. obviously scripts and short films are all submitted online, so that's not a problem. Mm. Um, but the stage award, which is very much a live performance, mm. we um, we just spent a lot more time and had a lot more people involved in looking at the videos. Mm -hmm. We didn't have as many submissions either, so we had about three hundred and twenty, mm -hmm. which is still pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, we opened admissions on the 1st of April. Yes. Uh, I think someone was playing an April Fool's trick on us because uh -huh. that was the day the Edinburgh Fringe was cancelled. Okay. So we had a very inauspicious start and then we closed entries at the end of April. So to get 320 submissions was yeah. pretty, pretty good. And then yeah. we've had more entries for the comedy writing and the comedy yeah. shorts got a lot of lockdown material, lot, lot, yeah. <laughs> lockdown inspired yeah. films and scripts. Mm, mm. But you know, it's a moment in time mm. and that's that's what you've got to do. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and having watched the semi finals yeah. last week and now like you said we're all building up for the awards yes. final which yeah. is open for yes. the public to see. So. Buy tickets, yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. I mean what we, what's interesting about mm. that is you saw the semi-finals, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. literally we had 16 acts performing from their living rooms, from their yeah. homes and bedrooms and wherever. Yeah. How difficult is that, you know? Yeah. And they did really well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So from that 16, we've now yes. got eight acts. Yeah. And I am delighted that we're mm -hmm. able to give those eight acts as near live experience. So they're, yeah. we are actually running um, a staged mm -hmm. uh, Show it's not a public mm -hmm. show, it's a behind closed doors, but it is live from world famous comedy store, in London, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, which is fantastic. So mm -hmm. they get to perform on a very famous stage, mm. um, and the event mm -hmm. which you can buy tickets for is being streamed live as it's happening, but you have to have a ticket to watch it. Yeah, so buy a well, ticket, yes, buy tickets. tickets. Yeah, so it's yeah, Tuesday the 22nd, yes. Eight. 7.30 doors, 8 o'clock show. Brilliant. So exactly like a live event. Mm -hmm. And it is live. We're not recording it. Yes. It is as it happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've been in the comedy mm -hmm. store today talking about how we're going to do it technically. And um, I must pay credit to Becky Singh, who's our mm -hmm. awards director, because she has absolutely driven all of this online activity. Yeah. Every time we've had another crisis and another another reason not to have a live event, Becky's yes. come up with a new formula for doing it. So yeah. all credit to her. Oh. Can't wait for for the twenty second, yeah. and I think just you know, finally, I would love to touch on um, one of your products, if you like, that it was one of the sort of driving forces why yeah. I wanted to be more involved with Funny Women, which is um, hilarious. You're offering to to corporates. You yeah. know, I always struggled in my um, career about knowing could women be funny, you know, uh -huh. or did you have to uh, su uh, suppress it or something? And then I, I you know, I oh, came yeah. across your course. So yeah. please tell us about that. Well, you know, humour is the biggest driver in. Mm -hmm. In terms of selling things, advertising uses humour, and mm -hmm. workplace humour is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And we recognise that pretty early on. And in fact, again, another happy accident. I, I, at one point, I think it was in about 2010, we needed, we lost a sponsor, and we needed some money. And someone said, well, "Why don't you run workshops?" So mm -hmm. we started running workshops. I wasn't going to run them originally, and then mm -hmm. someone let me down, and now I have become a workshop guru, and I run regular. Mm. workshops to help women get started in stand-up. I'm not stand-up, I'm very much a producer and I kind of fulfill a sort of directorial role, mm -hmm. but I think that's what makes me good at it. So yeah. so we do that. And our people are coming to those workshops mm. and saying, could you come and do this in our office? Yeah. And that's really what happened. So we started doing lots of live stuff mm. in, in companies and that has evolved uh, and we were, last year we had an amazing year. We, we probably had our best corporate year yeah. Um, we have worked with some amazing clients mm -hmm. like NatWest, yeah. Lloyds of London, Airbnb, Canada Life. Um, we're very blessed. We have lovely, lovely clients who come back and back to us. Mm -hmm. And of course, as of March this year, mm -hmm. that activity has died. Yeah. It is slowly coming back. But we, what we've done is used our experience of the online space. Mm -hmm. And alongside the awards, we were having comedy workouts and yeah. we were running those for comedy people and then we were running mm -hmm. hilarious virtual reality which were for this we did it as a business mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. we partnered with we connect which is a fantastic women's global women's network mm -hmm. um, 
and we're actually talking now to doing a similar thing but with a specific client which is great so what we've done is we've packaged up a lot of this experience yeah. and created two very clear things one is um, a team building yeah. um, product mm -hmm. which you can do in a morning or an afternoon but it, it does involve your team to come together virtually and we use the power of Zoom and we mix people up and that's really been very successful. And then based on another comedy product that we launched called the Comedy Crash Course, which is a week-long course with lots of different facilitators uh, to get people started in comedy, which was super fun to run, we've now created the Confidence Crash Course. Wow, yeah. So it's to get, we're bringing in lots of different facilitators yes. who will pull together mm -hmm. a program for your business to help your team yeah. bond and get their confidence back. Because you do lose your confidence when you're online all the time. Yeah. I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. I found it quite hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people now can, you can see my legs today, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. quite, it's quite scary. It's we've got to get our confidence back. So mm -hmm. we've come up with this really great online mod module, yeah. which is where we started. Because mm -hmm. to give you credit, you said to me at the beginning of this year, mm. we need to go online. Well, we've done it, like you say, the digital transformation yeah. of comedy and I just you know think those are 18 years of of doing what, what you've done is, is incredible Thank and you. I think the whole world needs more um laughs, laughs, laughs. And, and yeah confidence and happiness so yeah. it's just you it's know timely. it's all good all time but yeah hopefully our time oh well thank you very much thank you Annie yeah take care thank you